Section 7.5, logistic growth, how populations grow. In Section 7.4, we showed that when the rate of change of a population is directly proportional to the size of the population, the population grows exponentially. This seems like a reasonable model for population growth in the short term, but populations in nature cannot sustain exponential growth for very long. Available food, habitat, and living space are just a few of the constraints that will eventually impose limits on the growth of any real-world population. So if we look at exponential growth, the graph of an exponential function increases infinitely like that. So eventually it's not a very realistic model to use. The logistic differential equation. Now consider the case of a population P with a growth curve as a function of time that begins increasing and concave up as an exponential growth, then turns increasing and concave down as it approaches the carrying capacity of its habitat. A logistic curve like the one shown in figure 7.13 has the shape to model this growth. Let's take a look at that function. So it starts out as an exponential growth, but instead of going up like that forever and being somewhat unrealistic, this one is going to level out and eventually reach a limit, which will be the carrying capacity or the maximum population the habitat can sustain. We have seen that the exponential growth at the beginning can be modeled by the differential equation. dp over dt equals kp, that's the exponential growth model. Uh, if we want the growth rate to approach zero as p approaches a maximal carrying capacity, m, we can introduce a limiting factor of m minus p, where we have the maximum capacity. And once the population reaches that maximum capacity, this factor ends up being zero. So imagine if we had 100 as the maximum, and we're minusing 100, which would be the population, then this piece right here would be zero, and the population wouldn't increase anymore. So the logistic differential equation is dp dt equals kp, but then times the limiting factor, which is m minus p. This is the logistic differential equation. Before we find its general solution, let us see how much we can learn about logistic growth just by studying the differential equation itself. Example 4, the growth rate of a population P of bears in a newly established wildlife preserve is modeled by the differential equation. dP over dT equals 0.008P times 100 minus P, where T is measured in years. What is the carrying capacity for bears in this wildlife preserve? Well, it happens to be 100 bears. What is the bear population when the population is growing the fastest? Uh, the population grows the fastest when the population is half the carrying capacity. So what is the bear population when the population growing the fastest? 50 bears. What is the rate of change of the population when it is growing the fastest? Well, the rate, dp dt, is growing the fastest. We have 0 .008 when the population is 50. So we have 100 minus 50 here. Uh, let's see, we have 50 times 0 .008, that is going to be 0.4. So 0.4 times 50 is uh, equal to 20 bears, and we could have per time per year. Example 5, tracking a moose population. In 1985 and 1987, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources airlifted 61 moose from Algonquin Park, Ontario, to Marquette County in the Upper Peninsula. It was originally hoped that the population P would reach carrying capacity in about 25 years with a growth rate of dP over dT equals 0.003P times 1,000 minus P. So the carrying capacity of the area is figured to be about 1,000. According to the model, what is the carrying capacity? 1,000, uh, what is this? This is uh, moose. With a calculator, generate a slope field. Let's skip that. Letter C, solve the differential equation with the initial condition P of 0 equals 61 and show that it conforms to the slope field. So we have, oh, let's go with, we need to get uh, the P's over with DP. So we have 1 over P times 1,000 minus P, DP equals 0 .0003 DT. And we're going to integrate both sides, so we need partial fractions. We have, uh, we have, a over P plus B over 1,000 minus P. So 1 equals A times 1,000 minus P plus B times P. So if we let, uh, let P equal 1,000, 
then we'll have uh, 1 equals 1,000 B, so B equals 0 0.001, ten hundredths, thousandths. Then if we let P equal, uh, let's say, 0, 0, that's equal to, uh, what, what you get is you get 1 equals uh, 1,000 A. So A is 0 0.001 as well. Well, now this integral becomes the integral of uh, what do we have? 0 0.001 over P plus 0 0.001 over 1,000 minus P. And that's equal to 0 0.003 dt, so the integral of that. Now, if we multiply both sides by 1,000, we get uh, 1 over P plus uh, 1 over 1,000 minus P is equal to now the integral of 0.3 dt. And that, that's okay to do. We can multiply constants into integrals, and I'm sure we have dp there. Well, now the integral of 1 over p is a natural log of the absolute value of p, and then we have minus uh, the natural log of 1,000 minus p, and that's equal to 0.3t dt. Let's run a negative through this. We have natural log of 1,000 minus p minus natural log of absolute value of p is equal to, um, well, we don't, need, we don't need the dt, and we actually need a plus c. So that's equal to negative 0.3t minus c. And the reason we want to run a negative through is because now I can write natural log of 1,000 minus p over p is equal to negative 0.3t minus c. Well, now we can write 1,000 minus p over p is equal to e to the negative 0.3t minus c. So we're going from log to exponential form. We have 1,000 over p minus 1, because you have minus p over p, is equal to e to the negative 0.3t minus c. So 1,000 over p is equal to uh, 1 plus e to the negative 0.3t minus c. We have 1,000 over p is equal to we can write uh, 1 plus e to the negative 0.3t times e to the negative c. Now we can plug 61 in for p. 61 equals 1 plus e to the negative 0.3 times 0 and then times e to the negative c. And when we solve for e to the negative c, we get 15.393. I need a little bit more room here, so we have 1,000 over 61 is equal to 1 plus e to the negative 0.3t, uh, and then times 15.393. So let's rewrite that. 1,000 not over 61, but we're putting this back where we have the p. That's equal to uh, 1 plus 15.393 e to the negative 0.3t. Now these two can trade places. So the original equation is P equals 1,000 over 1 plus 15.393 e to the negative 0.3t. Logistic growth models. We could solve many more logistic differential equations and the algebra would look the same every time. In fact, it is almost as simple to solve the equation using letters for all the constants, thereby arriving at a general formula. In exercise 35, we will ask you to verify the result in the box below. The general logistic formula. The solution of the general logistic differential equation, if you have dp over dt equals kp m minus p, is uh, the p is equal to, that number goes on top, over 1 plus a constant, e to the negative m times k. So we can take m times k, get that value right there, times t. Where a is a constant determined by an appropriate initial condition. So we can get a using that initial condition, using the, the 61 and the 0. The carrying capacity, m, and the growth constant, k, are positive constants.